Hey, what's going on? My name is Joe and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. That'd be super. And remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Speaking of new content, I will be teasing what my next video is gonna be about. I'll do that at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Also, what did you think of Malignant? Let me know down in the comment section below. Malignant is about a couple of things. One, it's about inherited trauma and how suppressing your emotions and not confronting your feelings of shame, anger, guilt, fear, etc. that can grow like a cancer and how that can be damaging to you and the people close to you, which creates a cycle of trauma and you have to break the cycle. Two, it's also about accepting parts of yourself that you may not like. You have to embrace both the good and the bad. It makes you a complete person. It's who you are. And thrice, there's also a subtext about parasitic relationships. A one partner drains the other partner's energy, making them feel incapable of doing anything. Gabriel is a part of Madison, but Gabriel isn't a separate entity. It's just Madison. It's just her. Madison refuses to accept this, and because of that, she refuses to take any responsibility for her actions and own up to her thoughts until she accepts that both of these sides to her or who she actually is, she's gonna continue to struggle with who's in control. When you're watching this movie, just imagine Gabriel is not Gabriel. Just imagine Gabriel as a part of the inner thoughts, of inner subconscious or whatever of Madison. That's essentially what he represents. Now, why does Gabriel want to kill her mom? Why does Gabriel want to kill the doctors and even her sister? It's because there's a part of Madison that is pissed at her mom for giving her away. She's also pissed at the doctors for helping to separate her from her mom because she doesn't have that biological connection. She doesn't know who she is. At least she doesn't think she knows who she is. And when it comes to her sister, there's like that sibling thing where it's, she's going to be jealous of the attention that she's gonna get because she has that blood connection with her parents and Madison doesn't. And a sibling is gonna be even more jealous when they have emotional problems like Madison does. After the prologue, we fast forward to present day where we meet Madison and we meet her husband, Derek. Derek is essentially equivalent to Gabriel in the like parasitic relationship sense. He leeches off of Madison, he drains her of her energy, and he's just destructive, which is essentially what Gabriel does. They get into an argument and Derek hits Madison's head up against the wall. What an asshole. Derek on the other side of the door is like, I'm sorry that happened. That uh, Sometimes it's like I can't control myself, okay? But that's not me. Now that's interesting because that's essentially what Madison says whenever she does something wrong. She blames it on Gabriel, so she can't control it. I'm not excusing his behavior or her behavior. I'm just saying it is interesting. Now it's at this point with the head injury that Gabriel wakes up. Now when Gabriel's going after Derek, you see the couch cushion is sunken in and lifts up. And we're led to believe at the time when we first watched this movie that it's a kind of like a ghost or something. Little do we know that it's Gabriel slash Madison who jumped up to play a little game of hide and seek. Is the couch cushion rising up a little delayed? Yeah. Yeah, that's on the editing. The editing could have been a little tighter, but depending on the couch, it's not uncommon for a couch cushion to continue rising up after someone's gotten up. And we see Madison running around the house, running from this entity, and we don't know at the time, but she's actually running from Gabriel. And actually, she's running from herself. It's all in my head. It's all in my head. There's no one there. Yeah, you're right. Now, you gotta give Regina, the detective, you gotta give her some credit. She called it right from the get-go. Right in the beginning of the movie, she said it was Madison. No forced entry an abusive husband motive. We meet Sydney, her sister, and Madison is talking to her about Derek. And she says, I was gonna leave him, then I got pregnant. Mm, where are you? Where are you though? People who are kind of fragile like this and don't have control over their lives, they tend to sort of come up with reasons not to make a move or not to take control. Gives you an indication that she wanted to leave, she just didn't do it. Now Madison tells Sydney that she's adopted. She doesn't know her biological mother. She feels because she doesn't have that blood connection, she doesn't know who she is or where she comes from. Note the song Where Is My Mind playing in this scene and also a couple times throughout this movie. It's the perfect song for this movie. Not only because of the song Where Is My Mind, but in its connection to Fight Club, which is very similar in concept to this movie. You're gonna find that missing half. Yeah, don't we all? Couldn't have said it better myself. Now before Gabriel kills Dr. Fields, we see Gabriel just over top of Madison and it's just an eerie symbolism there, like this presence of Gabriel just looming over Madison. Gabriel kills Dr. Fields at night 
And when Madison wakes up screaming, we see it's the next day, giving Gabriel more than enough time to clean up and get home in time for a late night snack before getting Madison back into bed like nothing ever happened. Now Gabriel calls Madison. <sighs> Yes, Satan. The phone conversation is really interesting. Your fake mother gave you the name Madison. Your shitty marriage gave you the name Mitchell. These are essentially Madison's inner thoughts, her fears, her her own subconscious. She's afraid to acknowledge and admit that these are her own thoughts. And the detectives bring in a hypnotherapist for Madison and she has some repressed memories. You ruined your mother's cake. I didn't, it was Gabriel. Stop. No, it's not Gabriel, it, it's you. It's you, Madison, you're the one who did this. You're jealous of the attention that a new baby will take away from you. Mommy said she'd love me when the baby comes. She said nothing would change. And look, I get it. I got three younger siblings. I got two sisters and a brother, all right? But you gotta deal with it. You gotta confront those issues. You can't sit there and just hold it all in. You know, before you know it, you're sitting there, she's over top of the mom, her adoptive mother, sitting there with a knife, like she's, you know, Mike and Nias. Yeah, this guy. They're about to walk out of the house and Madison's biological mom just falls out of the sky. No, literally. <laughs> Why the f not? All right, this movie's batshit. Madison is taken in for questioning by the detectives. You were sick in the head when you were young. Those doctors helped you. It worked for a while, but now your sickness is back and you blame them for fucking you up. Nailed it. Maddie is put into an above average size jail cell and she's got a cast of characters in that jail cell with her. This is, this is not looking good. Sydney goes to the old hospital, brings back some of the tapes and Sydney and her mom watch the hospital tapes. They first see an interview with Serena, Madison's mom. We find out Serena was 15 years old, raped and had a pregnancy to term. And her mother, Serena's mother, called her pregnancy an abomination. What an amazing asshole. What a real piece of shit. Serena entrusted Madison, Gabriel, whatever, to the care of the hospital. They told me that she died while giving birth. Lying cock knockers. Lying cock knockers. <laughs> it's just a fucking movie. He's an abomination. Please look after Emily. Emily represents the part of her child that she loves, while Gabriel represents the part of her child that she sees as a monster. How Serena's mom handled what happened to her daughter impacted Serena, and how Serena handled that impacted her daughter, Madison. On Madison's interview with the doctor, you hear her say, Gabriel makes me strong. I find that line interesting. If you could just find the balance within herself there, that's probably would be her best bet. Then we get the big reveal. <laughs> this movie is like logic, yeah, logic, f logic. Movies f wild and then just f started. And we get the full explanation of what Gabriel is, according to Dr. Weaver. Now, as far as Gabriel being able to trick Madison into seeing what he wants her to see, that's fairly common. I mean, feelings of depression, anger, paranoia, irritability, it can trick the brain into seeing what it wants it to see when it's just not there. They can straight up lie to you. It's time. We cut out the cancer. It's not a tumor. Gabriel's like playing the drums like he's playing the intro to Hot for Teacher. He's like, meh, meh. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my raccoon gal. So the doctors essentially remove everything from Madison about Gabriel, except for one little part. They put the skull back on, patch everything up, and they're just like, there. Done and done. Now, since we got the reveal, we go back and we got the jail scene now, and it's like the women in the jail are just being served up on a platter. This jail is gonna be a damn massacre. Now, the women in the jail, I don't know what's going on. We got Disco Inferno, Denim Dan. There's some cast of characters here. I don't know, is it the 70s? What, what the fuck is going on here? Who's in charge of the costume design? I have no idea what's happening. Sydney's on the phone explaining it to Detective Key. She just explains the whole thing again that we just saw. I get it, she has to go over it again just for sake of the movie. But then we get shown the scenes again. Director James Wan's like, let me spell this shit out for you. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Gabriel's rummaging through the boxes at the police station and he's going through everything. And poor little guy just wants his leather coat and his you know fancy little gloves and his fancy little golden dagger. The little guy's like V and V for Vendetta. And he goes all John Wick on everybody in the damn police station. This little guy is angry. Hey Gabriel, don't look back in anger, all right? Back in anger. But I guess he did because he then throws the goddamn chair over the goddamn room and he lands it. Now Gabriel slash Madison and Sydney are in the hospital room with Serena. I should never have given you away. And I should have 
loved you no matter what. Good for her. She finally made it. it. Took a little while. What did you do to my sister? She's not your sister. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh, that's too good. We find out from Sydney that Gabriel was feeding off of the fetuses. Not cool, Gabe. Not cool. If you wanted to look at that part literally, you could just say that Madison's stress caused her to have the miscarriages. You think it's gonna go good, and all of a sudden, Gabriel kills Sydney. And then he killed Serena, the mom. What an asshole. I think someone needs a hug. Wait, is it over? It's not over yet, is it? But wait! There's more! Are they gonna flip it? They're gonna flip it. Yep, they flipped it. They flipped it. What? Madison is now controlling Gabriel, so Sydney and the mom are still alive. <laughs> why, why the f not? Now Madison says to Gabriel, you don't get to control me anymore. I'm taking it all back. My mind, my body, my everything. You can't lock me in here forever. He ain't lying. Madison says, I know, but next time I'll be ready for you. Hopefully going forward, Madison can deal with her issues and understand that these thoughts, these are hers and it's a part of who she is and she'll hopefully be able to find a balance better learn balance balance is key if she does not do this she will continue to struggle to control her emotions and her actions you will always be my sister she's not your sister <laughs> uh, that's too good madison and sydney hug while madison's biological mom is just like eh that's okay i'm cool don't worry about me now it looks awkward as hell but I get it. The whole movie, she's been wanting that biological connection, and here she's had it this whole time with her sister and her adopted family, and she didn't need the biological connection. So it's like the movie's making a point. But wait, there's more. We're not done yet. Why not? What else are we gonna do? The camera lingers, and we see Madison's leg go back just a smidge. Dun dun dun. Roll credits. We see Gabriel is already trying to take back control. What's it been like? Thirty seconds. Letting us know that this story might not be the last we've seen of Smushy Face Gabe, and leaving the door open for a possible sequel, if they want to go back to the story. Back to the story. I'll see myself out. This is not the explanation of Malignant. It's just my explanation. What is your explanation of this crazy ass, wacky ass, but fun movie? Let me know your take in the comment section below. And as far as the next video, I'm ranking another major horror franchise. Which uh, franchise am I doing? Oh shit. <laughs>